Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, forgetting what is written. All right, I admit it. I don't always remember what I have written. In fact, I've already forgotten what I've said to you so far. And that isn't necessarily a brain malfunction. It's more a survival technique than some sort of showing off. When you write a lot of things, you tend not to dwell on what has been written, published, and distributed. Because there's a whole waiting list of things that need to be written. And so your attention is always forward and never backward. Now, that lack of institutional knowledge, institutional knowledge of your own mind, can cause some problems sometimes when people you know, or more importantly, when people you do not know, remark or comment on something you previously wrote. And there's that awkward moment when you have to fold back your memory and try to remember what you wrote, why you wrote it. And sometimes, more often than not, you have to defend what you wrote but cannot really remember. And people, those strangers, get put off when you don't remember your own work or if you have to refresh your memory of what you wrote before. And I understand that frustration. The work lives on forever, on its own, as its own, on its own terms. And you... We, as the Creator, are always, in some ways, stuck in time and suspended in amber with that thing you previously wrote but no longer remember. Now, some writers remember every single word they wrote. They can recall it back to you on a prompt and provide quotes upon request. They reread what they have written. They go back and they edit what they wrote and already published. They are obsessed with legacy and with remembering. And I sort of find that kind of obsession with what once was written just a little bit sad. It's as if those types of authors cannot let go of the past. And they live on through the beauty of their own words. And yet they tend not to produce a lot of new work. They like to have written than to write. I prefer the ongoing discovery of the self. Oh! Oh, this is what I wrote and thought about back then? Ah, that's wild. I like it when I surprise myself. Sometimes I don't always recognize my own voice in what was written. But my own style is usually pretty much the same. Surprising yourself is a gift. A gift you give to yourself as an author. Rediscovering your past through your own words can be a great reward, relief, blessing, and condemnation. Sometimes what you wrote alarms you. As you reconstruct the whirlwind context that was surrounding you at the time of the imperative writing, you tend to connect the previous works with the environment that held you. A room, 
a pattern on the wall. A sidewalk made for stretching. A park for inspiration. You begin to recall the smells and the emotions of the characters as they reanimate before your eyes. And you become a new reader of your old work. You become the knower of secrets and the keeper of duties. And you begin to entertain yourself with your own decrees and your own moments of cogency and substance. Now, my human meme friend, we know some writers just can't leave well enough alone. They always want to revise what was written, even years after the fact of publication. And that, too, is just a little sad, because they will never be finished fiddling with it. And so they are doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past creating their own Mobius strip existence from which they shall never escape, stuck forever in the vortex of ego swirling around self-importance, and they have lost their soul. And I don't advocate disavowing all your work, but I do hope you don't get wrapped up in the past. What is done is done, and there's no undoing the rights or the wrongs. Once it is written, let it stay that way. Because even if you change it, it still stays that way. And I think this hands-off approach is pretty good for many other sorts of contexts, children, friendships, marriages. Just let go of what happened as best you can, and don't be tortured by what happened, by what is done. Don't try to go back in time and rewrite what happened. It cannot be fixed. Instead, be safe. The past is a dangerous place, and the risks are unknowable. You change what happened back then, and you change just who you are right now. So instead of looking back, look into the now. Know who you are and where you stand. And if you want to change how you think about the past, you can by moving on into the future. Because the past is always an echo of where you are going, not where you have been. Keep the faith. Allow your eyes to reach the stars, and do not touch the horizon fading away behind you. There are no demons left to chase and conquer. There are no more broken things worth fixing. You can only relive in the now. You can only live where you stand. You can only howl at the moon one time in real time without breaking the bonds of a past lighted by a thousand flickering oceans. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.